Hey everyone, welcome back to the Electric Supercar Channel. This week we're going to take some long needed advice and go get things checked out by a professional. I'll bring you along. All right, this week we are doing more electrical troubleshooting. So I took the driver's seat out, took this access panel off. I'm going to go replace my 12 volt battery. All right, uh, I took the shell off again. This is in preparation to getting the car checked out by a professional. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off um, the top here. Um, I'll probably get uh, my battery management system out of the way and just kind of have access to the battery, especially battery pack two. That's kind of where we've been having some troubles. So I'll get to that and then we'll get things uh, loaded up on a trailer and get things checked out. Okay, so I'm getting ready to uh, have the car get towed, but uh, in order to check things out, I thought I'd make things more accessible. So in doing that, I thought, well, I wonder if this is our old battery pack two problem that's cropping up again. So I've disconnected back uh, pack two. I'll turn on the car and see if we still get some issues. Okay, so again, the issues really come when we shift things into gear. Okay, so we're in gear and we're glitching, so not pack two. We are on our way. We've rented a trailer, got things loaded up. It literally has no room to spare. We've got uh, touching the wheel on both sides. We're gonna go take it up and see if they can tell us what's wrong. All right, this is John. I found John actually through YouTube. Um, he's got his own channel. Now I say his own channel. Why don't you tell what, what it is you do, where you are. Uh, I'm a professor of automotive technology at Weber State University in Layton, Utah. And uh, I teach hybrid and electric vehicle uh, technologies. And uh, I've got my own YouTube channel that I have had for about 11 years uh, with many hybrid and electric vehicles that I've disassembled and explored and I really enjoy that and I enjoy trying to help you troubleshoot your, That's your right. car here. That's right. <laughs> so Weber Auto, right? That's the Weber name of the Auto, channel? all one word, yes. Yep, so we've been uh, looking at this today and no, no surprise, but there, there is some sort of a high voltage problem. Uh, definitely some sort of a, a leak to the frame or even a, a direct contact. Loss of isolation. Loss of isolation. So you heard That's it here from the professor. Yes. So he's kind of pointed me in the right direction. Um, I might need to get a new tool. That's always a fun yes, thing. Yes. But uh, anyways, we'll go home and we'll take things apart and get to troubleshooting. But thank you so much for having me. Best wishes. All right, this is his shop. Again, we just pulled it in here just to kind of take a quick look. Use some of his specialized equipment. And you, ta you teach classes. What, what is the, you've got a boot camp going on? Hybrid and electric vehicle boot camp, and five people, day, seven hour a day class. And, and people obviously. come from all over. All over the world, yeah. See so yeah, they've got uh, various drivetrains here taken apart. Looks like some vehicles up on the lifts, hybrids and all electrical vehicles. Yeah, every vehicle in here is a hybrid. Battery, Tesla Model 3, Model S. Couple! Prius Prime. So, the, sorry, the, is this okay. one the Model 3 right here? Yeah, that's one of four. And that's the Model S? Yeah, 16. They've got six, the right. What's what's this one? Uh, this is the BMW i3. i3. And the Nissan Leaf. Okay. And then this whole wall here is our Tesla Model S. All the high voltage electronics on that. And then the front motor, the rear motor you have. Yeah. Right there. And I've got the Model 3 motors on the next two benches. I'm getting ready to shoot a video on those. Okay. Very cool. All right, we are off the trailer and back on the lift. This was a manual operation because I did not feel comfortable after what I saw trying to drive it again. I really appreciate John for uh, taking a look at the car uh, sharing some of his knowledge. So uh, give me a tour. 
I think I know some of the things I need to look at. Um, I might need to get a new piece of equipment, a new meter, but uh, I know I know some things now. So um, I'll probably start digging things apart and we'll see, see what we find. I'll try and do a quick summary of things that we tested and learned. So got into my high voltage box and um, he had a special meter and we hooked it up to the high voltage side and to the chassis or essentially the negative battery terminal and then same thing for the positive. Now the negative seemed to be okay. The positive he felt like that there was not enough resistance between the positive and the chassis. And so we started doing a few things and then we actually ended up making it worse. So we kind of disconnected, moved some things around. So we don't know quite what we did, but then uh, we kind of had more of a direct link to chassis. So that's why we didn't kind of push it or why we didn't drive it on, we just kind of pushed it on. So from here, what I'll do is um, I kind of know some of the troubleshooting steps and I'm gonna start kind of disconnecting some of the battery modules and retest and see, see where the problem is. Um, one of the things that we were looking at pretty closely is uh, the cooling plates or the cooling, called the cooling side of the batteries. It's not very isolated and so um, I do have these cooling plates kind of directly contacting the battery, uh, the battery module and so we could be getting some conduction there. Um, I, I did put some of the insulative material on, but I put it actually between, I'll call it the frame and the cooling plate. So what I learned is that uh, you can actually get, uh, it, it can get conductive into your cooling plate and then basically the coolant is also conductive and so that can be essentially charging the, the frame as well. So I'm gonna be doing kind of a full deep dive and see what I learn. I will bring you along every step of the way. Okay, so I think, I definitely think the cooling plates are playing a big factor. So um, I'll probably have to show some older videos, but um, these are the, uh, this side of the battery has kind of these aluminum fins that go in between the pouches on the battery modules and that allows for cooling. So I've kind of put these on there. I put some thermal paste, get good conductivity. Um, th I'm talking thermal conductivity to the plates then I can have things cool off. But um, I'll show an older clip here. So it kind of started out around 10 volts. To me there, there shouldn't be any voltage difference there. So you see it kind of was 11 volts and it drops pretty quickly. So again, there's not a, it's not like a circuit. It's not wired. It's just got a leak, I think, to the cooling elements. So this metal is not truly isolated from the positive negative terminals. And so what's happening is it builds up voltage. And since these are contacting the frame, I'm holding it down with metal and other things it's holding. So uh, since they're contacting the frame, it builds up voltage. And so um, previously, when I would hook this up, it would start off at like 300 volts and then it drops. And now, when I'm doing this, um, so I taught it like 260. So again, um, it was like 380 and goes down to 260. And guess what? So two of these, that's roughly 120 volts. So that's the difference that I'm getting. So I'm gonna have to go through and probably um, rethink my cooling. So I'll probably have to go through and remove all the cooling plates and see if I then have solved the issue. And if that's the case, then I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll revisit cooling.
Okay, that is pack two. Pack two is out. So I took the battery tray off. So the two battery modules here on the battery tray, took those off, took the battery tray off, opened up this access panel, took the other batteries out. The, what I ended up doing is I removed all the thermal paste. So um, to get good thermal conductivity, I put on thermal paste, um, but thermal paste is not um, electrically insulative. So I think that was causing some of the issues there. Um, so I'm gonna switch to thermal pads, which are used in electric vehicles and um, for batteries and things. And I, I, they're also electrically insulated. So that should fix, I think, pack two. So I'll go on to pack one and see if there's other issues there too. Okay, the four battery modules in the front are fine. Um, this is number five. So um, we had an issue at number five. So I'll figure that out. I think it might be, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, there's just a little bit of exposed wire there. So I don't know if that's what's going on, but uh, I'll keep, keep troubleshooting. Okay, I've got one battery pack completely outside the car. And the thought here is I just wanna see if I've got, um, if I've damaged any sort of controller or inverter board issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the car, see if I put it in gear, see if it still glitches. Um, that'll help me, I think, understand if I've got a problem there. Sorry, that was a close one. Um, I've got some open coolant lines and I don't want the pump to uh, spray coolant everywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect one of the relays. Okay, here's attempt two. So I can't remember if I showed people or not, but I did do a new CAN cable, essentially from the inverter um, I've got it kind of wired away from the high voltage. It's going here alongside it's this orange data cable. And so uh, new, new CAN cable there. Um, I think that's helping a little bit. All right, so I'm starting small with just one battery module connected. It says we're at 63 volts. We switch into gear and we're not glitching. So. We'll see if we can keep adding or find out where the problem is. All right, so I'm doing the uh, front battery pack, so just those four modules. All right, I don't wanna get my hopes up yet, but uh, this is with 253 volts and I'm in drive and I haven't seen it glitch. I've been wait waiting for a couple minutes. So I'll keep digging around and uh, see if I can keep up the good fortune. All right, so here's where we stand. Um, took the vehicle up to get uh, evaluated, um, learned a lot up there. Uh, so I'm able to kind of diagnose some of what I believe is going on. Um, I do have a couple things on order. So I've got uh, the, the thermal pads that will conduct the heat away, but not conduct electricity. So those are from a Chevy Bolt, and those are used, again, all over the automotive industry, so that should work well. I do have a, a new gauge or meter coming that will help to identify if everything is truly um, isolated, that we've got the 12 volt and the high voltage systems isolated. So that's probably where I'm gonna leave it for now until I get uh, those items. I wanna say thank you for all the well wishes uh, on recovery. So uh, just quick update. Uh, recovery is going okay. Um, back's feeling a lot better. Um, unfortunate side effect, I, I got uh, felt some nerve pain um, that's going down the leg. So uh, keep an eye on that. It's slowing me down a little bit. So uh, bear with me, but uh, we'll get back to full speed soon. You probably thought I forgot. I remembered. So we did still have the Name My Car Challenge. The winner clearly was Watson. It was a landslide. Again, so many names would have been so good for this car, but that was the winner. And Phil Euchre, I think that's how you say it, 
He was the first name that I saw that's had that suggestion, so his name will also go on the car. Thank you all for participating. See you next week.